And then what about sonically? Because obviously, as your career has evolved too, you've you know worked over so many different types of beats and with so many different genres, moving away from you know working with DJ Pooh, for instance, to to move in more with the Hieroglyphics crew. How do you think that shaped your artistry? Well, I was already working with Hiro since the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, A plus and Tajay. Uh, Sir Jinx just threw a picture up online of me. Um, a plus and a uh, Tajay okay. way back when way back then okay. you know what I mean <laughs> so I'm just looking at the picture like wow we really been doing it for this long I think Tajay had a box cut a gold chain on you feel me like it was just looking crazy like wow that was a real blast from the past so like working with them wasn't nothing new I'm more like trying to introduce them to the world okay and just introduce the whole thing that we got right. you only got a piece of it with me Mm -hmm. But when they came out, then the whole movement you got to see. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was only a, like a little bit with me that, that, that could be funneled through whatever was my chance to get out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I had to kind of comply it at some point. But don't get me wrong, though. Everything that went on there, I enjoyed. Like, funk is my shit mm -hmm. to the point where I studied funk. And now I could play probably all that shit that was sampled on that record at this point. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, that, all that shit was me too. But I could do other shit too. I'm into other shit too. So that's why the second album came out the way that it came because I felt like I didn't have enough of that sound on the first album. First album more polished and I'm not really like that. I like raw shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what attracted me to hip hop in the first place was it wasn't glossy. It wasn't all this perfection like right. it was rough. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And then... Um one of the other things that I always thought was intriguing was with Judgment Night, how that kind of like launched to me like a whole new genre of music, that soundtrack. So do you think that being on there like really shaped how people perceived you or opened you up in a way? I'll say this. It, it hella helped me see different things as far as music is concerned. That, hmm. that, that probably has a big uh, that's probably a, one of the reasons why I started studying music theory mm. eventually is from talking with Jay Maskus and doing that shit Because when we was in the studio doing that the rest of the band wasn't doing shit They was in the other room playing pool or some shit. They never even Acknowledged us damn near so Jay Maskus played everything on that song except for like the 808 kick you know what I mean? But everything in that he plays. So I'm just sitting back like, damn, he don't even need these fools. Like, he the mastermind. Right. So that just like was amazing me in itself. Mm. But also I was talking to him about music and stuff. And he was generally interested in like, you know, what is hip hop about? And he didn't really fuck with it like that. He fucked with me. You know, they asked him, what rapper would you like to fuck with? And he had heard of me. Mm -hmm. So he's like, okay, I'll fuck with Dell. And so that's how they even set that up. But mm -hmm. once we start talking, like, we just learned from each other, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was, like, real tight. You know what I mean? Like, I learned a lot from just talking to him. Because I wasn't on that level of music yet, mm -hmm. you feel me? So okay. he just opened my mind up hella more. And then, obviously, later, uh, or you did have, you know, the dissolution with Elektra and then with the rest of the camp with Jive. How do you think, or what made you guys really push with the internet and how do you think that impacted everything else that ended up happening like i said you know stuff really just kind of fall into place like mm. that was an opportunity so we just went with it it was either that or what we, what was we gonna do really with the internet this cat named stinky he already had a hieroglyphic site i wasn't even on the internet at that point like mm -hmm. that was too early for me but tajay he was on the internet and so he knew a stinky and then that's how that started working. He got with Stinky, was like, let's make this an official, you know, website. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck with Hyro for real. And then that's how it developed into, you know, where it's at now. Right. So it just was an opportunity that kind of just arose. But um, as far as I just want to say before a lecturer, like, I don't have no problem with a lecturer at all. Like, mm -hmm. like what it is what it is. Like, I felt, I feel like I was kind of responsible in some ways for us having to part ways, because I wasn't being the most agreeable person to work with, at, along with whatever else was happening too. Okay. You know what I mean? Like they uh, put it this way: Sylvia Rome flew out to the Bay to 
talk to me. That's huge. Like at the time, I didn't even know how huge that was. Right, right. Who you think she really doing that for? So she obviously must have really felt me. But she was like, you know, she'd ask me questions like, you want to work with this producer, maybe this producer? And I'm like, nah, I could do what they're doing. Why would I want to? It's like, I'm not asking you that, dude. Like, right. they make records that sell is what I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep you on the damn label, you know what I'm saying? I'm not asking you how great you think you are. So, you know, it just was like, okay, he's not going to move or whatever. But also, they was just shifting their whole shit over there, you know what I'm saying? Everything was switching around, changing, uh, you know, taking shit out, moving shit in. It was just a brand new house. So, Dante was gone, you know what I'm saying? So, it is. It, it, what's that? Stimulated dummies. Yeah, I mean, D Dante is the dude, though. Like he he's like he like a big brother to me, you know what I'm saying? He looked out a lot in them days, you know what I mean? Like he signed me because he really felt something about it. Like it wasn't just okay, some money or something. Like we we was kicking it out there, you know what I'm saying? I, he gave me the keys to his apartment when I was out there, you know what I'm saying? You can right. just come and go as you please, you feel me? So obviously working with you, and then he was working with Brand Nubian, working with KMD, and um, yeah, I know Doom too. Like I used to fuck with Doom too. Yeah. Constipated monkeys too, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, curious, you know what I'm saying? Uptown, I used to be up there a lot actually with Curious. So what, what do you think made that group of artists, including yourself, so special and stand out in a way? We was just bugged out, man. Like really, to tell you the truth, we kind of was all, all on that kind of shit. Like mm -hmm. just kind of was just bugged out, you know what I'm saying? Like we was just a trip. Mm -hmm. We was kids though too, you know what I mean? But I guess we wasn't ashamed to be ourselves and do things the way we wanted to do them. Mm -hmm. Like you could see that with the way we dressed. Uh, to me, that's kind of what hip hop was about, to tell you the truth, you know what I mean? Right. Like kind of just be yourself. And just, you just, just make it work for you, you know what I mean? So I think that's what separated us. But I feel like everybody at that time kind of had their own little way or their own little twist on it too. So, you know, that's, that's especially Doom. But we kind of grew up on the same type of shit, too. I remember when I was at Curious House and I seen Doom and um, Sub Rock was there, too. And they was like kind of like cutting, sort of, on a record player, an Ultra Magnetic record. And I'm like, damn, y'all fuck with Ultra Magnetic? And they was like, oh, hell yeah, Ultra's the shit. And I'm like, oh, okay, see, I, I should have known. You know what I'm saying? Like in my head, I'm like, I should have known. That's why they, you know what I mean? That's why they're on what they're on. Yeah, you feel me? Like, we kind of just kind of like, you know, melded together off of that alone, you know what I mean? They was working on Black Bastards at the time, actually. Okay. Yeah, that was a, that was a great... It's, it's interesting when you look back, because a lot of the labels <clears throat> had these kind of collection of artists that may not have seemed that they were similar, but kind of fit in a somewhat of a same umbrella. And obviously Dante Ross being kind of a common thread there, and then later he did great work with ODB and others. Mm -hmm. But, but um, all that to be said, I think it's it's interesting too as your career evolved with those type of experiences that you were able to get bigger working kind of outside what people knew you for, um, and especially initially and as your career progressed. So why why do you think? when you've branched out or you've done things that are a little more unconventional in the rap world that you've gotten embraced outside of rap so much? I mean, uh, you just said it, really. Like, it's outside of the rap world, so. <laughs> yeah, so people outside of rap, you might not even like rap, mm -hmm. but you might listen to Gorillaz, you know what I'm saying? I think that's cool, you know what I mean? Or Deltron, you might not even, like people have told me they don't even really like rap, but when they heard that, okay, this is what it could be, okay, I'll kind of fuck with this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like different to people. Not like I'm trying to make something that's so much different from what, what hip-hop is, you know what I'm saying? That's not really my intent. But at this point, I kind of see like, okay, at this point, you could kind of make your own lane completely. Like you ain't even got to be associated with hip-hop. Because to tell you the truth, a lot of people didn't uphold you know what I'm saying? I feel like I upheld all the all the laws, all the rules, got every damn book you could probably find on hip hop. Anything you interested in in hip hop, I probably got the shit. Mm -hmm. And I, I know a lot of people didn't do all that. They wasn't tripping off it that damn hard. You know what I'm saying? Like it was cool, but 
you know, when it's when things change, it just change and fuck it or whatever. I don't know when money come into the situation, whatever. I just seen it like, okay, I didn't create this world where now it's where it's at. Like that wasn't part of my idea. Mm -hmm. That happened beyond my control. You know what I'm saying? I still got to deal with it though. So, but you know, you now you could kind of curve your own lane. You could do it the way you maybe that will turn into what Herc did with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like. Right. He wasn't trying to make no kind of wave or nothing. Like that's what that's what we doing, and then it just became this because of the um, inspiration that came from it. You know what I mean? Well, actually, it's kind of all kind of the same wave. If you look at it as black music, kind of it's pretty much the same thing. But now, you technically yes, but I'm saying though, you know, that at this point, you got your space to make your total expression the way you want to do it. Right. You know. In the beginning, hip hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence thanks to gangster rap. Right Crazy hip hop changed the world. Right gangster rap changed the narrative. I'm representing for the gangsters all across the world. And then changed the world again. Cause I'll come and take your life away. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shape gangster rap. I think the real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.